Hello, welcome to this beginner whittling lesson. In this video, we're going to look at how to whittle this eagle's head from a block of wood. To that, we're going to use a one by one by one and a half inch block of basswood. And we're going to do most of it with a knife, uh, but we will do just an optional last step with the V tool to add the texture onto the feathers when we're done. So let's get started. I've got my one and a half inch long, one by one inch square piece of wood here. And like a lot of the other projects that uh, I've been doing recently, we're gonna start by flattening it, which means that I have marked center lines on each side, and I'm gonna take two of the opposite corners and I'm just going to whittle them until those sides are completely flat. Doing that with some big push cuts. I'm doing this quickly for the sake of time. You may take more cuts to do this, and that is totally fine, but I'm gonna keep carving those sides off until I've made it completely flat there, down to the center line on both sides. Do the same thing on the other side uh, quickly here. In this video, I am using a uh, one and three quarter inch knife from Deep Holler Knives. This one has an end that they call the talon end. So it's got that tip that comes down in a nice sharp point, which uh, I love for details. And we'll see that on a couple things in use as we do the ears, not the ears, the nostrils and the eyes at the end of the video. All right. So we've got my piece of wood um, pretty well flattened there. And the next thing I wanna do is to draw on a little bit more of my pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break um, this up into quarters. I'm gonna start by drawing a halfway line and I'm just kind of estimating that about halfway up the block. Um, you wanted to measure that half of one and a half inches tall that'd be at the three quarter inch line but estimating it's going to be close enough i think and then i'm also going to uh, break that in half so basically split it up into uh, quarters so we'll do that on each side like this, and then I can go ahead and draw my pattern on. So uh, I'm gonna start, we'll say that this is what my head is gonna look like. I'm gonna start on the back here by drawing that up here and this down here. Okay, and then that's gonna kind of establish that shape over the top of the head there. And then I'm going to leave this flat at the halfway point and draw a shape out down to here. And so to be clear, we're going to remove this. We're going to remove this and this. So let me do the mirror version of that on the opposite side quickly so that you can see that. And those are the major sections that we're going to move uh, to kind of get the rough part of our shape. Uh, so first I'm going to start by cutting this triangle off the top, just like that, that area that I had marked. And I'll do the same thing on the other side, like that. So will leave you a nice square at the top. That'll start rounding off the head. And then I'm going to cut this large notch out here that's going to establish the bottom of the beak. So I'm going to do that with a stop cut right at the base and carve up to it. And I'm just going to repeat that over and over until I've removed this entire shaded in area that I have. Okay. And if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, I'm going to use some of similar techniques to start the shaping here, but then we are going to round this one off a little bit more than 
uh, some of the other shapes. So some of these cuts will be familiar with you. So a very rough version of the shape, but I'm going to continue to refine this by now um, narrowing down the top of the head shape. I'm going to do that by putting a center mark here, and if I want to, I can draw up to it from here and here. I'll do that on the other side as well. Like that. And it's helpful to have a center line uh, across here the top as well. And so to start with I'm going to remove this hard corner here and I'm going to put all I'm going to shade in all four sides of that. This is a similar cut to what we've done on the top of the fish. If you um, watched that video it's going to be similar to what we did to shape that. But basically I'm going to take this hard corner off until I've taken this entire section right out. You can do that in several cuts, uh, that's fine. You might do smaller cuts like this as you do it. And I'm going to do that on all four sides. Now, I'm not going to keep these perfectly flat like I did on the fish. I'm going to round this off a little bit more um, and not leave those huge flat facets. Uh, just a different style. But this does really help me to see clearly the wood that I'm removing. I'm doing the same thing on all four sides. So I've got kind of a square on the top. It just helps me get that general shape really quickly and I can come back and we will come back um, in a few minutes and, and round it off a little bit more. So then the last thing I wanna do uh, to, to shape the top of the head here is to taper that off. So I'm gonna put a kind of a horizontal line halfway down, uh, halfway between you know that quarter line and the top. And then I'm gonna taper that from this line up to the middle. Now, the way I like to do that is to just go straight sideways across here. Now, if you have a nice sharp knife, you can make this cut straight across the grain like that without too much difficulty. So for a big, uh, sharp, kind of roughing length knife uh, is good for this. If you're not comfortable making that cut, uh, if your knife just isn't quite ready for the hat, or your hands aren't quite ready for that, you can start on the side here and you can shave it up and get the same kind of idea. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna round this off a little bit more. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that there for now and we'll come back and round it uh, in a little bit. But uh, the next thing I wanna start doing is shaping the beak a little bit more. So I'm gonna make a similar cut uh, to what we did on the top, but I'm gonna come in about from the edge of the beak here, about a third of the way across the front, which kind of lines up to the bottom of the same distance back as this one point where we carved across. And I'm gonna basically extend my stop cut and taper that there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, about a third of the way across that flat face. And I'm gonna carve this off, this hard corner off there. So what that's gonna do is I'm going to start with a stop cut here. I'm going to shave up to it along that line I just drew. And what that's going to do is just, uh, it's going to scale that neck back a little bit. And it's going to extend that beak a little bit further back, right? So let's do that on both sides. Again, a stop cut, kind of extending the bottom of that beak. And then I'm just carving off that hard side all the way from the base up to up to there, just starting to establish the, the shape of the neck up to the beak. Now, I want that neck to go in quite a bit more, even than it already is. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and repeat this cut on the front, make it a little bit deeper, okay? And I don't want it to be straight. I kind of want it to curve up in there. And then I'm going to repeat some of these cuts up in there, this hard line that I just made, I'm even gonna do that and shave it off and just kind of start to round the front of that. We may come back and take a little bit more on it, but I wanna go ahead and do that to kind of establish the width of the beak that I wanna have out to about there, okay? Now, we're gonna keep working on the beak and I'm going to put a little point 
equal to the bottom of the base here, about halfway between here and the top of this section. Okay, so a little point right here, and then I'm going to draw a line to it up here. And then the other line that I'm really going to want, which uh, you can draw if you want, is going to basically go straight from there all the way out to the point. Okay, and that's going to kind of define the shape of that beak. So you can see I'm going to have a bottom cut here at the bottom of it, and then that top of the beak is going to come across there. So let me do that same thing over here. I'm going to put a little point at the center there, draw it up to about the middle of there, and if I draw that line out, it's going to go all the way out to the tip of the beak from here. So let's start with the bottom of that beak. What I want to do is I want to shave in from this line that I just drew basically back down to the neck. So if I start slowly, I'm going to make cuts like this. That's going to take my beak up a little bit further back here until I get up all the way to that point. And eventually I want to be able to make a cut straight across that line to make a really clear, flat facet on the bottom of the beak, like that. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit down there. That's about, about it for the bottom of the beak, right? So you can see that's establishing this cut that I've got here on the bottom. We turn around and do the same thing on the other side. You can take a few cuts to do this, but eventually what I'm working towards is getting up to that point and having a straight, flat line from the tip of the beak all the way back up to that point, just like this. It's my final cut, nice and flat. And you'll get some little spots under here uh, as you're doing that. Uh, you can come back and just clean that up by adding some stop cuts and shaving up to it. But that's pretty good. So it's kind of established the bottom of my beak, I'm looking at where that's coming together, and I want those to just be flat planes on the bottom to make a nice angular look on that beak. So that looks good. And now we're going to work on establishing the top of the beak, which is going to come from that point straight through the middle of this um, facet that we've had. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to um, start by putting a stop cut there, and I'm putting the tip of my knife right at that point, and then just putting that flat into the wood to make a stop cut, okay? And then I'm just going to come up to this flat facet, and I'm going to shave down to it like that, just kind of starting to establish where that is, okay? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to put that stop cut there right up to that point, and then I'm going to kind of come across this flat part here up to it to start to establish that. Now what I want to do is extend that out, and you can see I need a much uh, more defined kind of forehead area here. So I'm going to extend this, I'm going to start extending this from that point to the middle here. If you want to see that, I'll just draw it on here, about like that, about like this. Okay. So I'm going to put another stop cut across there. And this I'm going to shave up straight up to that, like this. Same thing on this side. Put that stop cut across. I'm going to go all the way across this, this top front, shave up to it. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to have to make that beak a little bit smaller and more pointy, right? You can see this is coming up at a, at a sharper angle towards the foreheadish kind of area. So I'm going to come here at the front, I'm just going to shave in deeper a few times like this and kind of flatten that out. Now what's happening is I'm getting this huge kind of brow area. So I'm going to do that a few times, flatten that out a little bit, but then what I'm going to start doing is just shaving this, this large kind of brow back off into more of a forehead. So I'm just going to take that, slice it straight off, I'm going to follow that around, keep carving that back, like that, and that's going to establish more of that forehead. Now I started to lose the distinction there, so I'm just going to repeat that stop cut. I'm going to repeat this cut so it's a little bit deeper. And I want a little bit of a ridge here to kind of define the, the head going into the beak, uh, but I don't want it to be huge. So I'm going to repeat that same thing here, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a ridge there 
kind of going across. Okay, so that's getting pretty close uh, to what I have. Uh, the last thing that I want to do is to uh, take these flat surfaces here and just kind of shave them just a little bit back like that. And what that does is that's a flat part of my wood that I haven't I haven't cut at all yet, and it just kind of takes that um, sawmilled finish off of it. Your your piece of wood may or may not be rough there, um, but it kind of makes it evenly textured with everything else. And then I'm just going to kind of do some final cuts on top of each of these facets. And I'm going to leave those as pretty much um, clear flat facets. I think that angular look on the, no on the beak uh, is pretty good. Okay, so nice and flat going into that. So that's pretty good. You can, of course, uh, tweak that a little bit uh, until you're happy with it and um, make sure you're happy with the shape of that beak. But it's got that kind of eagle look if it's got that flat kind of front. And of course, it's not, you know, it's not perfect. It's a, it's an estimate. It's a caricature, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, I want to keep moving from there to start rounding the rest of the head. So I kind of started rounding here. Um, and I just want to continue that back. And I've got this kind of open area on the top here. I want this really to just be kind of flattened out from here to the top like that. And so while I'm at it, I'm going to kind of extend this, this ridge all the way around. So on the top here, I'm going to get rid of that ridge and flatten it out. And on the back, I'm really going to start to flatten this out. So I want to take that sharp corner off the back of the head like that, but actually I want to go even deeper with that. And then what I want to get to is a little bit of a flare. So it's coming up kind of at an angle here and not just straight down, okay? So I'm gonna do that by coming in at the bottom after I flattened it out and just kind of coming in here and doing a roll cut, which means I'm pushing in, but then I'm kind of rolling my knife up and that's gonna create that kind of flare at the bottom of it, right? So then what I'm going to do is keep rounding it off. I'm not going to leave hard, flat facets on the head. I'm going to leave that on the beak. But on the head this time, I'm going to kind of round it off more. So I'm just going to kind of keep going around here where I've got a hard corner. And I'm going to keep flattening it like that. And I'm still doing kind of a bit of a roll on the bottom across each of those hard corners, bringing it up like that. Okay. And let's extend that around on the other side as well. And I'm trying to be careful to keep my index finger here on my left hand back so that it's not in the line of my knife. I've always got to try to keep aware of that. Um, even though I have my glove on, I want that back. But I'm also really controlling my cuts um, and uh, not putting too much pressure on them. Okay. Now I want to keep rounding that off. So I'm going to extend that from these cuts that I've made here. And I am going to bring this bottom part of the neck back even a little bit further than I than I have for now up to there. I'm going to have to repeat some stop cuts under the beak to get those wedges out of there. I'm just going to keep rounding that back a little bit, give it a little bit of a thinning out of the neck there, and then I'm going to extend my rounding. I've still got a very flat side here and a hard ridge here. So I'm going to extend that up here a little bit. And it's going to have a little bit of trickiness here at the corner of that but then I'm going to go above the, the neck and do that too. I'm going to extend that out on this side really until I can get close to a rounded off here. So it's still going to be pretty flat, but I can kind of extend those rounding off cuts all the way across. Now I kind of came into here a little bit, so I'm just going to repeat and clean up that little start or stop cut right at the corner of the beak. Keep that kind of evened out. I'm going. Okay. Good. So let's do that on the other side too. Again, I'm extending these um, cuts on the sides. I'm just trying to round off these hard corners that I have, including going all the way up like that. Rounding it off from the back towards the middle and from the front towards the middle until I've got it pretty well rounded off. And again, I've come up enough that I need to kind of reestablish these cuts where the beak is coming into the head. I'm just going to do that like that. Okay. 
Now my top of my head now is still a little bit angular. I want to round that off too. So I need to, where I see a hard ridge like this, I'm just going to come off and round that off a little bit. If I do it on one side, I'm going to go over to the other side and do it. And that's the way I make sure that I'm keeping it symmetrical. Um, I've got a hard ridge kind of going around the back and I'm just going to make small cuts straight across the hard ridges. I don't want to over round it. I mean, I still like to see the facets, but anywhere that I have these hard ridges, I'm just going to add another cut straight over them to kind of round them off a little bit more, including the back of the head there of kind of a hard ridge. So I've got a nice kind of more rounded off uh, shape for the head. So that's looking pretty good. Um, let's see. I think I'd like to bring the back of that head in a little bit more. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Flatten that back just a little more and then re-round that to a line with the rest of the head. Okay, that looks good. I like that profile. But now I've got a little bit more of a angular back of the head, so I'm going to round that off again too. Just make some cuts there. Okay. Good. I think that looks pretty good. Um, all right. So actually we've got most of the shape here and now we're going to add uh, some details. So uh, to do that, we're going to do a few different things. So the next thing I want to do is add the kind of feathers on the bottom. So we have the white feathers. Um, I want to carve these triangles on the bottom to uh, indicate where the brown feathers are going to go there. So uh, easiest way I think to do that is that I want to want uh, to start drawing these triangles up. I don't know, about a quarter to a half an inch up, probably more like a, a half an inch up or maybe three eighths, we'll say up from the bottom. Kind of triangle shape, but I'm leaving just a little bit of space there at the front. I'm going to do the same thing on the back, and that just helps me keep them kind of even and make sure that I'm getting to uh, I don't know, an even number of, of uh, triangles and feathers that I'm putting on, and uh, not too sharp of a point on the front and the back. It'll leave me a little bit of space. And then I'm just going to extend those down. They don't have to be perfectly symmetric. You're just going to make some triangles like this to um, define it. Bring that up a little bit higher, I guess. Uh, and see how many you need. And you can adjust your drawing a little bit. I got bunched up there. That's okay. Okay, let's do the same thing on the other side. And again, they can come up at some different angles. They don't have to be exactly the same uh, or even. I'm trying to get about three of them in there from the front to the back. All right, and I'm going to carve each one of those out. And the way I'm going to do that, let's start with a nice flat one here. Um, I'm going to add a stop cut, and I'm wanting the tip of my knife right at the corner of that triangle, the tip of that triangle. And then I'm just going to stick it in there and then kind of rock my knife down to put a flat stop cut right around, along that side of the triangle. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the triangle. Put my tip of the knife right at the tip of the triangle, rock it down to put a nice flat stop cut there. Now I'm going to shave it out. I'm going to do one cut towards the first stop cut I made. I'm going to do another one towards the second one I made. Those should come right out. Those are easy to make nice deep stop cuts, but if they don't come right out, just repeat your stop cut until they do. And then I'm going to do one more cut kind of flat across to get rid of that ridge. And that gives me a nice little indentation where that was. Uh, and then I've just got to do that like, I don't know, seven more times, right? So uh, two stop cuts, one in each side of the triangle. Come back to it. Good. And then I want to flatten that out like that. And I've done this a lot, so, uh, you know, I can do that pretty easily in just a few cuts. You want to take your time and practice with that. Um, if you have a detail knife, this is a nice long knife, but it's got a very fine point at the tip. If you have a detail knife, um, as opposed to your roughing knife that's got a better tip, um, having something with a nice narrow tip is really helpful for these kinds of details. 
And that might be the tip on your, your only knife, it might be the tip on your roughing knife, or it might be a detail knife. If you have a smaller detail knife blade, you might do that. I'm just going to keep going until I'm all the way around. Uh, I was a little worried that there'd be a couple points like this in the video where I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over again and I would run out of things to say. So, I want to tell you, what do you call a bird that is so sick that it's breaking the law? It's an ill eagle. An ill eagle. Get it? So, you may start to uh, regret portions of this video where I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, but I'm not done yet with carving these feathers or with my jokes. Why don't eagles tell knock knock jokes? Do you know? Because freedom rings. But um bum ch. All right. Thankfully for you, there is only one more triangle for me to carve out here. And I can't remember any other eagle jokes. So, I'm just following that same pattern. Stop cut along each side, straight up to that point, and then flat cut to kind of flatten that out. All right. Now, these are nice, um, clear, uh, but rigid uh, uh, triangles that I've cut here. So I do like to make a little step here where I'm going to round that corner. Now, the tricky part here is that if I round this corner, and I'll show you how I do it with just the tip of my knife, I mean the tippity tip of my knife, right like that. And the tricky part of that, of course, is that if I'm not careful, my my knife is going to add a nice little line into there that I don't really want. All I really want to do is make that just like that. If I stick it too far out, I'm going to get a line across there. So I'm just getting the tippity tip of my knife straight across there. Trying not to add an extra overlapping cut. I did it there just a little bit, right? You see that? So then I'm just going to come back. It's not a big deal if you do. I'm just going to come back and... Uh, shave that in a little bit further, repeat my stop cut to get it out. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, but I'm just going to do that until I've got all those. And then I've got to turn it around. I've got to do it the other way, which is maybe mildly more awkward. I'm going to have to cut towards myself to do that. But I'm just using the tippity tip of my knife. I'm not applying hardly any pressure. And this just adds a little bit of detail onto it and uh, makes it just look a little bit a little bit smoother okay this level of fine detail can get a little bit tedious and a little bit um, challenging uh, just using the tippity tip of your knife you can see I'm really choking up on my blade here I'm not putting my thumb on the blade I'm putting it on the side so I can hold it there but doing the same thing as uh, the other side where I'm really trying to avoid uh, going too deep and adding uh, overlapping, not overlapping, but extra messy lines across the, the face of my triangles down there. But that's good. So we've got that bottom part there, and now we've got a few more details to carve. So the next thing we'll do is these little nostril triangles. This could be optional. You don't necessarily have to add them, but I think they add a good little bit of character. And to do that, I'm going to go right up into this corner, and I'm just going to put a little, a little angled notch like that. Okay, let's do that on both sides. A little angled notch, and then I'm going to carve just a little triangle chip out of that. Okay, so again, this is where it's going to be helpful to have a really um, fine tip on your knife. This is a perfect shape for this, and a nice narrow but firm tip. And I'm going to take the tip right at the point of that triangle, and I'm just going to stab it straight in and back out. I'm going to do same thing on the other side of the triangle. I've got that tip right at that point. I'm going to kind of stab it straight in and down a little bit. And if I've done that well, I should be able to now come across 
and carve flat across the bottom and get a little chip out of there just like that. You see that? That's not perfect. I think I am going to repeat it here. I want that to be a little bit more clearly recognizable as a little triangle chip. That's going to be just like that. I'm going to get that awesome little triangle chip out. I got a little pencil mark there. I don't like using my eraser if I don't have to, so I'm just going to shave over it like that to get rid of it. Okay. Good. We'll do the know. same thing. On oh, very interesting. Google, my Google Assistant. I thought I was talking to it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Those hard um, stop cuts in and then a flat across there. Okay. If you haven't never done that before, uh, I might suggest that you get a little piece of scrap wood. Try it a couple times. You're doing uh, what I call a triangle cut. Uh, it could be considered a chip cut. Uh, one line in on each side and then a horizontal line across the bottom to get that out. Okay, that adds a nice little element there. Next thing we're going to do is add the eyes. And what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to come up um, really kind of in line where that nostril was and I'm going to draw a triangle that kind of, or the top of a triangle anyway, that kind of comes up at an angle from that, kind of a 45 degree angle up from the nostril like that. Let's do that on the other side. Okay, and then I want it to come down and I want the length coming down to be about twice as long as it was going up. So you see how I'm drawing that further coming back than it was coming up. Okay, so it's coming up here and then it's going to come down like this. I'm going to make this a little bigger than you might think you need to. Um, one of the mistakes I made when I first started uh, trying this pattern was um, just making it a little bit too small. So here's an earlier version of this and man, that was a tiny eye. So I want to make it a little bit bigger, but I'm basically drawing a triangle similar to what I did on this. And I'm going to do something very similar here as well. Uh, so I'm going to put a, a stop cut with my tip right at the top of the, the, the edge of the triangle I drew there. And I'm going to come straight down into it with the tip like that. Okay. Whoops. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. So the tip there, I'm going to kind of roll it back to extend that along the line I drew. Okay. Then I'm going to do a horizontal cut kind of starting right with my tip along this back part and I want it to come straight across up to that front part. And if I keep my tip right along that ridge, whoops, that was a little harder than I meant to, but that's okay. I'm going to get that. Okay, and I'm going to start to get that defined line there. I want to do that a little bit deeper. So I'm going to extend that and repeat that until I get it a little bit deeper. Kind of more like this. Okay. Okay, so I might want to do that a couple times on both sides of that with a little bit of a cut back into those two stop cuts I made, but I want to make that a really nice kind of angular cut towards the top. And what that's doing is kind of creating kind of an upper brow for the eye. Okay, and I will say that it kind of looks cool all by itself. So I could actually leave that and make that the eye. If you don't want to do the next part of the eye, you don't have to. Um, I could leave that just as it is and uh, keep that the same. Uh, but let's do that on the other side. Uh, same thing. I'm going to put my tip in right at the tip of that angle. Nice deep stop cut there. I'm going to do it down here as well. Okay, and then... Uh, let's try to take it in two steps this time, um, up to the first stop cut, like that, and then up to the other one, like this. Okay, we can take a few cuts to do that if we need to, but again, I'm kind of establishing that as a nice deep triangle, which makes a nice kind of upper brow, and if you wanted to, that could be your eye, and it would actually look pretty cool. Um, if I was going to make that the only part of the eye, I would probably make it a little bit smaller than I drew it on. Um, but yeah, just cleaning that up a little bit, making it a little bit smoother. Okay. 
So then the last thing I'm going to do for the eye um, is I'm going to take from this angle, I'm going to come straight below it, put a little point there, I'm going to draw a line up towards the front and a line up towards the back. So basically I'm making a little diamond shape there and that's going to be my, my eyeball. Let's do that over here. Put one point kind of straight down here and then I'm making this kind of diamond shape. That's going to be my eyeball. Okay. All right, now we're getting into some fine details here, um, and you're going to want to use the tippity tip of your knife. That's the technical term for this part up here that is called the tippity tip. And I'm going to, I'm not going to just draw um, stop cuts. What I'm going to do is try to take a triangle chip out of each one of these corners. So I'm going to add a little tiny stop cut, just jabbing the tip of my knife in there. I'm going to make that little triangle chip out of the back, like that where it's coming in there. I'm going to do the same thing on the front of the eye here. I want it back a little bit from where I put that um, top of the cut. So there's a little bit of overlap of the brow extending in front of there. And I'm going to take a little chip right out of that corner. That didn't come out, so I'm going to repeat a cut on each side until it does. Very good. Okay, so you start to see that there. Then I'm going to do one on the bottom. So just jab my tip in on each side like that. And then a flat cut straight across to get that chip out. Okay. And this is where this is a little bit more of a challenge if you haven't done this level of detail carving uh, before. Uh, but then basically, I've got my shape for my eyeball there pretty good, and I'm just going to kind of, if I've extended those back, um, I've already established that pretty well. I'm going to take, again, the tippity tip of my knife and just shave off where that pencil line is, and that's going to kind of round out the bottom of the eye socket there. I'm going to do the same thing on the back there. Okay? And that's pretty good. Okay? Okay? Let's do the same thing over here. I'll do it a little bit quicker. Uh, for me, this is getting to be a bit of a long video. Take a little chip out of the front of the socket and a little chip out of the back, right like this. Good. And a chip out of the bottom, like this. And I didn't get that one as cleanly, so I'm just going to repeat those cuts until I do. Good. And then I should be able to just do a little flattening across there and across there. So I've got that kind of diamond shape, but then because of the chips I put in, my, my eyeballs nice and kind of rounded off inside of that. Okay. Awesome. So, we only have one last step, which is to add some texture for the feathers, which certainly could be an optional step. It actually looks pretty cool, just like this. Um, and there's a few ways you could do that. I'm just going to use my V-tool. That's going to be simple. So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start kind of uh, at one of these little triangle feather things coming down here. I'm going to kind of start parallel to the line that's angled up towards the nose. I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to carve up. And then as I start that way, I'm going to kind of curve towards the top and pull out. So same thing here. I'm going to kind of carve up, go up, and then uh, get it out when I'm about halfway up. Let's go ahead and do that all the way around. Now, you might watch this and say, hey, you know what? Birds aren't symmetric like that. And that's probably true. It's a stylistic choice. It doesn't have to be perfect. I always struggle with being completely random in the cuts that I make. I'll do kind of on the back here, one going each way. Uh, so you can, you know, you can take your own approach. But uh, my style, I kind of like to have kind of roughly symmetric, even things. Uh, even if that's not quite natural, it's not supposed to be a, a realistic carving anyway. Put one straight up the middle there. And then I'm just going to kind of come back through and in between each one of these do a similar kind of thing. Maybe try to make them not completely straight, but kind of make them come in at an angle and then curve up towards the beak like that. Uh, just kind of in between the ones that were there. 
like that. Same thing across the front and the sides, kind of coming in and then curving up. Uh, so they're not just completely straight, but a little bit curved. There's a little bit of a space for another one that I can have up here, like that. Same thing on this side. Just kind of filling in those gaps. Okay, if you wanted to, you could start with a pencil and kind of plan out where you wanted to put them. Uh, but this is kind of the approach that I'm that I'm taking. Now, to do the top part, what I kind of like to do is do one uh, on the back end of the brow, kind of like that. And then a small one just on the front end of the brow. It kind of helps establish that brow a little bit, right? Let's do that on the other side, just kind of a small one on the front and a small one along the back. And then I can kind of come between those and do a few a few cuts across here. Maybe one kind of roughly down the middle. And then I've got a gap here on each side that I can kind of stick one in. Okay. And I'm going to try not to overdo it. Um, if I see any large gaps, I think I've got a little bit of a gap here. I'll add another one. Okay. But that is it. Um, I've got that done. Uh, all of the elements to it. If you want to simplify it again, you could do um, a simpler eye and just do that top part of the eye instead of the eyeball. Let me give you a couple of quick notes about painting. Um, the eye is going to be your hardest part, obviously. So what I do is uh, paint the eye with um, a not watered down but completely solid yellow right on the eyeball. The way I do that is just a teeny tiny paintbrush. Um, often I buy my paintbrushes in the model section instead of the paint section at the hobby store uh, where I can get little tiny paintbrushes, but I'm going to paint just the entire eyeball yellow, try to keep it just on the eyeball itself. Uh, then I paint the nose or the beak yellow, but I do water that down a little bit. Then after that yellow eye is dried, I do black all the way around a border around that eye, leaving the yellow in the middle. Now I did that with a teeny tiny paintbrush. I tried it with a toothpick first. It didn't work very well for me. Um, so I did it with a teeny tiny paintbrush, but basically draw a little black outline in that diamond shape. And then you can see I just did the eye. Um, if you watch my eye painting video, I used uh, my embossing tool to put a little black dot and then a teeny tiny white dot with the tip of a toothpick to get that white part of the eye. The rest of it is pretty straightforward, white and brown. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Hope you give it a try and uh, that it works well for you. Thanks for watching and happy whittling.